What is design? Is it just about appearance? How nice it looks? Or how easy it is to use? For example, think about smartphones. These small devices have made our lives so much easier. We can do almost anything with them. Take pictures, instantly communicate with our friends and family, and there are all sorts of apps that we can use. We can carry our smartphones anywhere and everywhere. But have you noticed anything unusual here? Where are they looking? They are staring at their phones. Who are they talking to? Talking to their phones. What are they reacting to? Sometime, something that is happening on their phones. It really seems like they don't know how to talk to each other, even though they are in the same room and sitting at the same table together. They can't put their phones down. A smartphone can be very useful, but it can also shape our behavior. In this case, it can make us forget how to communicate with one another. Smartphones might produce invisible borderlines between people. Let me talk about my personal experience at a company I used to work for. I was once working as a designer at a car company. Every day, I focused on drawing and sketching to create a design for beautiful shape. This was my main work and responsibility while at the car company. Now, when I go back and see all those great looking car designs and remembering all the car models that were created, it makes me feel very excited about the whole design process. During this period, I could learn and understand how important collaboration and communication with other designers is and how they play an important part in the well-being of the final design. Cars are considered one of the most attractive, speedy, and luxurious machines among various products. But we can't forget that they can also be dangerous and cause accidents. Smartphones and cars, these recent products are very useful, but sometimes our behavior changes when we use them. Yet, we can't think of any other form of smartphones or cars. This is because the first prototype has the ability of forming the way we use products and once we get used to it, we can't think of any other shape. De designers have to think about how people re react to a product and be careful to making the first prototype. They shouldn't think just about how nice it looks, but also how people will behave towards it. Design decides our behavior. So products should be more well thought out. Nowadays, instead of creating new concepts, designers mostly seem to focus on how to make things more convenient. We are forgetting how to connect with each other. It is the de designer's duty to make products that make people collaborate and communicate better with each other. I came to the conclusion that design should be approached from our kansei. Kansei is a Japanese term. It means the mental process of receiving information without thinking, intuitively judging what to do, and it is unique to each person. For example, 
It can be the emotional impression we feel when looking at a product, but it is difficult to put into words. Kansei is shaped by personal experiences, therefore it's different from one another. When we share the value of different Kansei in design, our experiences will be richer and more creative. We all have different Kansei, but the product we use is the same. This is why we have to carefully design the first prototype of product. As a design researcher, I started my area of Kansei design and collaborated with brain scientists in 2004. We found a new idea that comes from our memories in the hippocampus. I found designers should concern the importance of inspiring ideas from their experiences in the past. Then, how can we reflect users' say and their experiences into design? I think a designer's mind for people can solve the problem. So my current goal is to show omoyari through products. Omoyari can be translated as consideration, sympathy, and empathy. It means showing thoughtful consideration towards others, usually by action or behavior. In case of design of uh, omoyari can be shown by making the product easier, safer, and user-friendlier to everyone. Let me introduce a wearable product which I designed for my daughter when she was in nursery school. It can detect how she felt in front of new experiences. Sometimes it could be fear, surprise, or happiness. I made a team with a medical doctor to get heart rates, a computer scientist to sense their movement. Through this integrated work, we could know how children have experiences by nonverbal communication. The name of the product was created by the children in the nursery when we tested it. They were happy to wear this onigiri machine. Children can wear it like this. It captures the behavior information of a child and helps predict dangerous situations. Parents can understand the situation from child's point of view. They can share emotional interaction with their children more. I also created this non-verbal project with the Kansai approach in Holland. This idea comes from our old memories of playing the xylophone when we were small. Instead of using sticks and hands, each note is played when they step on the floating dots. To complete and enjoy the music, they need to collaborate and work together. There is no physical shape of design, but natural reaction between them. No high technology, no manuals, no boundaries, but playful interaction. In order to convey omoyari and kansei in form and interaction, us designers have to put in a lot of effort. 
We design, my aim is to make people's movements and relationship more flexible and attractive. It seems like we are sometimes being controlled by technology or recent designs. But don't forget the importance of connecting with other people. Please value your own kansei and that of others. For a better future, value the compassion and connection through non-boundary design. Thank you.